Okay, it's Friday. Got uh, a day off work. Been out for brekkie with Sam and Belinda. It's been a very civilised day so far. Um, now, I'm going feral. Now I'm heading up Mount St. Leonard. One of the harder climbs in the Melbourne kind of area. Uh, not ideal because it's around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't even started walking yet or I'm just setting off now. Um, so I'm climbing up Condon's track, which is a bitch. It's steep and slippery. Did I mention it's steep? But yeah, about a thousand metres, well it's over a thousand metres climbing on this one, so it's going to be a big day. I'm going to be walking down under, under with a head torch, I think, tonight. But the downhill bit back to Donnelly's Creek, or Donnelly's Weir, is, um, is down a fire track, so it'd be pretty sweet, even with a to head torch. I just got to get up to Mount St. Leonard before dark, but that should be doable. We'll see. I haven't done a big climb for a, you know, I suppose the Cobras a month ago. But um, anytime you climb a thousand metres or more, eh, it's a fairly serious little climb, especially when you're old and stuffed like me. Anyway, let's see how it all goes. I'll check in later on. This walk starts and finishes on these kind of fire track management tracks. This is a, I'm pretty sure this is water catchment from Maroon to Dam. I'll be coming back along there much later tonight in the dark. I'm heading up there now. So yeah, the walking's a little bit uninspiring for a while, but it gets better. I'll leave and start climbing Condon's track, which is a serious little walking track. And once I'm up the top, the walking's quite good on the grassy kind of fire tracks up there. And we'll see how it goes. I might have to consult the map here. I think I'm on the middle track. I think the right one goes over to Marinda Dam. I'm not 100% sure here, so there is a sign. I oh, know, I'm right, I'm on the middle track. So, for anyone playing along at home, I'm following road 17 at the moment. They stayed up late at night to work out the names of these, these roads. Well, there we go, Mount Monda, 8K. So. Where's St. Leonard? Oh, 13.5. Shit. Okay. Right, that's it. That's it, kind of through the trees there, eh? Maybe. I've been climbing road 22 for a while. Um, but I'm leaving it here. And I'm starting up Condon's track. The, um, there's a little red arrow in the tree, a little track marker on the tree that'll give you a bit of an idea it's the right track. There's no other sign yet. Um, so, Condon's track is the, probably the crux of the walk. It's the steepest bit, the roughest bit. I went on all trails before I headed off. The last person to review it was back in uh, Feb. It's now April. He said he couldn't get up. It was too overgrown and rough and eroded. It sounds like a fun afternoon. What's well, left of the afternoon It's already... Quarter to three. Um, all trails comments can be notoriously unreliable. There's no um, vetting the comments for experience or anything like that. So one person's rough and eroded and steep can be another one's walk in the park. We'll see how it goes. I'm figuring it'll be passable, but we'll see. If not, I'll have to retrace. Apparently, that person retraced back to the car. Anyway, all good. We'll um, push on and I'll fire up the GoPro if anything exciting happens. Just me. Does that guy look a bit too jaunty? Right. Onwards and upwards. I'm, a, uh, I'm into it now. I'm going up Condon's track. Um, I've walked this track a few times over the years, not for around 10 years, and it doesn't get any easier as you get older. One thing I've found, I've been up it and down it, I reckon you're better off, well in my opinion, as a broken old man, 
I always think you're better off walking up this one because it's very slippery. It's got a lot of this um, like bark and leaf litter on the ground. There's no civilized things like steps or anything here. So I just think it's easier walking up if your feet are slipping a little bit than trying to trying to walk down this one. And my walk will finish with um, a walk down the the Bicentennial National Trail tonight along a, one of those management roads. So a lot easier walking down that than, than walking down this slippery stuff. Anyway, that's, that's a feral opinion. Take it or leave it, that's what I reckon. So, I'm actually, uh, actually discovered a few steps. Just as slippery as ever though. But progress is being made. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that mark in the mud. Someone's been coming down and they might have made a good recovery or they might end up on their ass. It is slippery. So I'm still um, climbing Condon's track, but the gradient's eased off a fair bit now. So the going's good, well better, and a little bit quicker. I'm going okay. <clears throat> as far as time, I'm going to be walking in the dark one way or another. I just want to get to the top of Mount St. Leonard for, before it gets dark. It's really, just mainly catch the sunset and also from there on it's all management road all the way back down the mountain so it won't be a problem to the head towards from there but um climb was pretty much as i remember it it's solid very solid it's taken me i don't know i think i've been walking about an hour and 40 maybe an hour and a half from the from the ute i haven't been i haven't been um Overly pushing, but I haven't been mucking around either. So, all good. Okay, looks like I've um, the worst of the climbing's over. I'm just heading along the top of Condon track now. <clears throat> um, I'll break out. Oop. Yeah, I'm just heading along the top of Condon's track now. I'll break out on, um, I think it's Monda Road soon, and then I'll follow that around to towards Mount St. Leonard. So, um, yeah, the walking, Monda Road's far from flat, by the way, but the walking, the hard bit of the climb is, is over now. The last little pinch up Mount St. Leonard's a bit steep too. But all good. Got a cracker of a day. It's been, I think they said 24. When I jumped out of the car, it was 23 degrees. Um, tomorrow is meant to be miserable. Tomorrow's meant to be... I think 20 mil of rain tomorrow. I'm meant to be heading down the surf coast, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll break out the the GoPro again when I hit Monda Road. So Monda tracks morphed into this <coughs> grassy four-wheel drive track. Uh, sorry, Condon's track has morphed into this grassy four-wheel drive track, which is. Uh, which is making walking very easy and very pleasant. I've seen a few lyre birds so far. There's lyre birds everywhere up here, but as usual with a GoPro, very hard to um, capture them. 
one day I'll get lucky, I guess. One will get close enough to me when I'm sitting down. There's a scratching there. But yeah, it's um, one of the limitations, I suppose. Some people use a DSLR for this kind of stuff, but I'm sick of carrying my DSLR. I just want to walk without lugging two kilos of camera and lens and batteries around. So that's one of the reasons I went for vlogging. Okay, that's the end of Condon's track. So, I've just come from Donnelly's Weir. That's a hard 6.5 k's. So now I'm heading towards Mount St. Leonard. I don't know if you can read that or not. So this is, I think this is Monda Road. I'll have a look at a map somewhere. So it's a grassy fire break that basically seems to almost run along the crest of the Great Dividing Range. To my left is water catchment. To my right, it's fucking forestry. Um, so yeah, but I suppose the one thing about the forestry is I'll get some big sky views. Apart from that, I'll be trudging on and trying to get some out St. Leonard and back into the uh, water catchment area, I think. This is a little bit easier. I reckon um, I'll get to St. Leonard around 6. Which is good, it's getting dark around 6.37, so it's all good. We'll see how we go, eh? So I'm still um, trucking along on Monda Road, heading towards St. Leonard. I think this is Mount Monda up here, to be honest with you. But um, it could be a feral fact. Um, on Monda Road, there's, on, yeah, Monda Road, there's a few options here where the road sidles some of the high points and the grassy kind of fire break goes over the top. I mean, depending on how you're feeling, the road's slightly longer, the fire breaks are slightly better walking, I think. I normally go the grassy fire break, breaks, but um, yeah, there's a couple of choices, but as you can see, this one in front of me. That's the road going the long way around. This is the fire break going straight up the hill. So they're inevitably pretty steep. At least they're soft under your feet. Uh, catch you soon. I've been climbing this grassy fire break now for, I don't know, probably a kilometre and a half. I'm almost topped out. But yeah, I think. I think anyway, it's much nicer than the road, even though the road would be a lot easier. This is maybe, maybe fractionally shorter. Oh, it's debatable. Um, but anyway, I go over this hill, drop down a bit, and I'm back on Wanda Road for a little while. That's all good. It's getting late now, it's about five. I've been going for three hours. I'm probably, I'm Probably less than an hour from the top of St. Leonard, I guess. So everything's working pretty good. Puffing like puffing Billy over. Anyway, that's what happens when you're old and fat. I think of about a, a million places. I'd less want to be than here. This is uh, this is pretty sweet, even if I am walking uphill and sweating. So I'm on the um, a section of the Bicentennial National Trail now, um, and I'm back on Monda Road too. I'll follow the Bicentennial National Trail most of the way back to back down to the ute now um, for those who don't know the bicentennial national trail runs from i think it's cooktown down to hillsville so i'm doing the very bottom bit of it some people most people use horses on it some people 
bike to it. There's been a few that have walked it. It's a seriously long, it's the longest track in Australia. It's, it's not overly practical to walk. Doesn't mean I won't do it one day, you never know. So this is um, Tanglefoot, Tanglefoot track coming in there. They just, um, I passed the notice, they're going to log this side of the road, so Tanglefoot track's an awesome walk. I don't know what that means for Tanglefoot track, whether that's going to be obliterated or whether they're going to leave a little corridor. I hope they save it because, yeah, it's a, I might have to get up here actually in the next couple of weeks and try and walk it. Because it's an awesome walk through some really nice, fairly old growth forest. It's ferny. It's a nice length loop. It's about 10 k's. So you'll yeah, we'll see how we go there. But if you want to walk it, I reckon get in quick. By the time I publish this, it might be gone. Okay, so I've just left Monda Road. I'm heading towards the summit of Mount St. Leonard now. So not far to go. There's a long way around which follows the road, which would be the 1.2. Once again, if you look ahead, I don't know if you can see that water tank in front of me. The road swings left. There's a grassy pad goes straight up the hill. I'll probably stick to the grass. I think it's slightly shorter and a little bit more pleasant than walking the, the gravel road. Um, haven't seen a person yet. Uh, it's just the way I like it. Hopefully when I retire, which isn't far off now, I'll be able to do some more walking midweek. My life to date has revolved around work and uh, squeezing walks in around weekends and where I can. And as John Cash would say, I'm a solitary man. I like being on my own most of the time. So yeah, we'll see what retirement brings, though, eh? Some decent sized stumps up here. Those notches where the old loggers used to put their, their boards in to chop them down. So, this is the uh, Mount St. Leonard's fire tower. I'm up at around 1,100 metres there. Looks like a fire tower guy might be here, or someone wandering around the fence. Yeah, maybe it's just a punter. Looking at all the electrical shit hanging off that tower. I reckon you'd uh, want your tinfoil hat on there. Up there. Uh, I made up to St. Leonard. This is about just over a thousand metres above sea level up here. So it's fairly high. I think I've climbed. I've done ups and downs. Probably climbed about 1200 metres so far today. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's going to be a fairly chilly night, a fairly chilly walk back down to the Ute, I think. I'm going to chuck a thermal on in a minute. I have a bit of a break here, grab my head torch out, and then get off this mountain. Um, there's a guy down here in the fire tower actually looking for a tiger snake. He's a snake catcher, so... I found a skid. <laughs> he just showed out he found a skid, so if he, if he finds a snake, I'll go and get a video of it. Yeah, I'll catch you next time, mate. Have a good one. Take it easy. <laughs> yeah, it's getting pretty dark now, so video is going to be a bit thin on the ground and uh, on the way down. I don't know if you can see over there. It's Melbourne. You can't see Melbourne, but there's plenty of lights starting to glisten. And then over there, there's a Daniel Rangers, that's a mountain range, there's a Daniel Rangers. And yeah, this is a fire tower. This is the little lookout platform that I'm standing on. I do graffiti that's been here forever. That I like. I'll see you last time I was here, which is probably 10 years ago. No, maybe 5 years ago. Hang on, I'll show you. Oh, 
wasn't me. Not sure who's paying the bills in this fight out. Looks like they've left the lights on. All right, this is going to make for riveting, riveting vision. Um, I've just dropped down the steep bit. Picked up this road. I'm not sure what road it is, but um, I think this is the road now. I'll follow all the way down to Donnelly's weird picnic ground. So um. Yeah, it's all pretty good. I'm making really good time down the hill, of course. Oop, I found a trip on a stick. Um, I'll, uh, I'll probably not do much video, obviously. But I'll, um, I'll turn it on if I see something interesting. Incidentally, this is, I think, road 11 that I'm following now. Every now and then, I'm seeing a um, Bicentennial National Trail marker in the light, in the dark. But apart from that, I'm just looking at the lights of Melbourne in the distance through the trees. GoPro won't pick them up, but it's pretty sweet. Good thing is it's a bit warmer down here. I've dropped probably 300 metres so far, so it's a lot. It was pretty chilly up the top of the lookout. So I've left the. Uh, that number 11 road. And I'm heading over a knoll on a kind of lesser track. Um, I don't know if it's going to pick up my phone. If you can see there, but yeah, a little bit more climbing. Um, and then I'll be dropping down to um, Donnelly's Weird Picnic area. So it's been a nice walk down here. It's been. Um, Seen a few roos and a few wobblies. Haven't seen a deer yet, which is a bit surprising. But um, plenty of stars in the sky. The GoPro won't pick them up, but so just scared of samba deer. So that's a that's a big deer. Uh, I'm on road 20 now, so I'm following that all the way now. Well, down to Donnelly's. On this weird picnic area, and then I'm a, on, a, on a water race before I retrace my last few steps back to the ute. I suspect my um, phone actually takes better video at night than my GoPro. So we'll see how this footage turns out. This is um, yeah, this is the iPhone. <clears throat> I don't think it'll be good enough to pick up the cloud, the stars. Oh, well, it's a star through there. So I'm just um, walking past the Donnelly's Creek picnic area. There's not much point dropping in there. Can't see anything anyway. And, um, I'm going to pick up a water race soon and then I'll be following that back to, well most of the way back to the Ute until I pick up my outward route. All good. I'll, um, I'll break out the, I'll break out the camera when I hit the water race I suppose. So that's the water race. Looks a bit creepy in the dark, but um, it runs from Maroon to Dam, I guess. I don't know where it goes. It goes into the pipe up there. Oop. Up there, I don't know if my camera's going to pick that up. But... It's not my voice. Yeah, maybe it says a bit about my twisted mind. I've always thought, wouldn't mind going upstream on one of these and chucking a lilo and floating down. Uh, maybe that's just me. Yeah, like I said, my brain's a brain's that of an 18-year-old boy, and my body's that of a 70-year-old man. So I'm almost. This walk starts and finishes just on the outside outskirts of um, Hillsville. Um, so it's not exactly wilderness down here. There's all um, farms um, just on the opposite side of the road to where I park the Ute. So obviously someone's having a Friday night get together.
All right, I'm back. Car's still here. Looks like, hopefully, it's unmolested. Always a bonus. Oh, good. Everything's still attached for a little bit. All right, I'm back in the ute. It's about, you know, it's just before nine. I've made a shake. I'm ready to drive home. Um, so I started walking around two, so that's seven hours. I, I've been back for about 15 minutes, just sorting stuff out before I drive home. That's a that's a tough walk. It's one of the harder walks around Melbourne. It's probably, the climbing hasn't come out, isn't working on my old trails. It'll probably sort itself out tomorrow, but it'll be up around 1,200 metres climbing. And I walked about 25 k's, so considering I didn't start till two, it was um, it was a solid day out. Um, Condon's track, the clock, I reckon it's best to go up Condon's track. It's steep and slippery. Coming down, it, I've, I've done it both ways over the years. Coming down can be pretty hard when your feet are slipping, slipping in the loose bark and the, and the mud, but that's just my opinion. Um, I walked down from tonight from St. Leonard in the dark, and it was actually pretty awesome with the lights of Melbourne in the distance. Um, I had a torch, I had a head torch, but yeah, it's um, worth considering too. Anyway, I'll catch you next time.